guys, Larry Vincent here. Welcome to another edition of The Bridge HC Online. So glad that you guys can join us for the first in a brand new series called Forging uh, a New Path. Uh, and it deals all about this idea <clears throat> that the way we've been doing outreach in the church today needs uh, some refreshing. Instead of in, uh, expecting people to come to us, what would happen if we went to them? Okay, and so we're going to talk about uh, you know, that kind of outreach throughout these next uh, three or four sermons. And uh, today, you're actually going to get a, a, a double release because not only will the first sermon uh, be released today, but the second one, which is given by a good friend of mine, Tom Evans, uh, uh, an outreach uh, small group pastor, that's what he is, small group pastor at Connection Point uh, Christian Church in Brownsburg. Uh, he will be giving the message, and so we'll re- we will have released both of those by the time you're watching this, okay? So uh, as we kind of think about <clears throat> forging a new path and and getting uh, getting out to share the gospel with people, uh, a term always comes to mind. You know, uh, if you're going to talk the talk, then you better walk the walk. Have you ever heard that before? I, I mean, I'm sure you have, right? But all that means is if you are going to say something, if you're going to make somebody do something, then you better be sure that you are willing and able to do the same thing if you're not already. This is, seems to be one of the biggest complaints that I have heard about Christians today from non-Christians is that they don't practice what they preach. They're hypocrites. Now, you may have uh, you know, various degrees of what that means for you. And you might be a Christian listening to this and saying, that's kind of an unfair stereotype. And that might be true. But the idea is, is that is the perception. Uh, and, and so what I want to talk about today, before we even talking about going to someone, we need to make sure that our hearts are doing what God has called us to do. Are we walking the walk? That's what I want to talk about today. And the very <clears throat> first thing that I want to cover is that, <clears throat> excuse me, walking the walk means doing the work. It means doing the work. We're going to have our Bibles open to Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. Let's take a look at uh, this one verse, and then we'll come back. Hebrews 12, 1 says, says this, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Now, there's a lot of things in this verse that I want to point out to you, mainly about three things. Number one is that the word therefore, okay? Now, in my studying and, and what I have always taught and what has been taught to me is that when a therefore shows up in the first verse of a text, you want to see what the therefore is there for. So you want to read the context before this word came up so that you can understand the argument that the author is trying to make. And so if we do that with Hebrews 12, 1, we find Hebrews 11, because 11 always comes before 12. Isn't that, uh, isn't that kind of funny? Anyway, Hebrews 12, 1, uh, and the word therefore says to go back to Hebrews 11. And so when we look at Hebrews 11, it tells us, uh, uh, it shows us a, a hall of faith where the big characters of the Bible uh, are put together into one list of people as, as, a, um, as a model for how we should live our Christians, Christian lives, right? And right there, it tells us, uh, you know, that because of those people, that's what the therefore is, because of these people, and because we are surrounded by them, I, such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, Excuse me, and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. And so, what 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 the author is trying to get us to do here with that therefore is to tell us that look, since people who have come before you have done the work they were called to do, we need to do the same. Well, what's the same? Well, the same is right there in the verse. We need to throw away our stresses, that's everything that hinders us, and the things that we do wrong. That's the sin that so easily entangles. That's what we are called to do. We are called to throw away our stresses stresses and and the things that we do wrong and, and just focus on that path that has already been marked out for us. 
That's what that term marked out for us means. Okay. Now, just because the path is, is narrow, you've heard that before, right? The path is narrow and a very few are the ones who walk it to salvation. <clears throat> but just because the path is narrow doesn't mean that it's not been walked before. You know, you, you, being a Christian is nothing new. Walking that line is, is nothing new. It's already been marked out for you. You've already been able to see the steps that you should be able to take. And so that leads us into our, our, first, uh, our first set of questions. And as always, as we say this every week, our questions are, are ba- uh, based off of three different tracks so that you can choose the track that is most comfortable uh, and most relatable to how you think, okay? So we will always have a theological questions for those Bible nerds out there like me, the practical questions for those who just want to apply it to their lives, and then the skeptical question for those who just are doubters, who are uh, who are looking uh, at Christianity through a uh, through a critical eye. You know, it's just it's just a really good way for a uh, conversation to happen no matter what level you choose. So you can choose only one or you can go through all three. It's up to you. All right, so here are the questions. Question number one, read through Hebrews 11. This is our theological question. Read through Hebrews 11 and choose one or two people from the chapter and talk about their character traits, both good and bad. Why should these people be considered examples of the faith, especially when you look at their backgrounds, why should these uh, people be considered examples of the faith? And then are there other biblical characters that you would add? Who would you add to your hall of faith? Uh, faith? Who would you put on, a, on that pedestal that says, this is who I should model my life after? For me, it's Jeremiah, but it might be someone different for you. Talk about that, uh, and then we'll go into the practical question. Practical question is this, how easy is it to throw away the stresses of life? It tells us to stop you know, the, stop letting those things hinder us. So how easy is it? Talk about the steps that you personally take to get rid of stress, whether it be spiritual, mental, emotional, physical, or relational. And number three, skeptical question. Do you think Christianity has plenty of modern role models for Christians to follow? If so, do you see Christians following that example following those role models? And if not, how do you explain the supposed lack of examples? All right. Take uh, 10 minutes or so uh, to talk about either one or two or three of these. uh, And then when you are ready, go ahead and come back and then we'll start our second section. Hey guys, welcome back. Let's, Let's just quickly talk about where we were before uh, you guys started discussing. Remember, walking the walk, that's what we're talking about here. If we're going to talk the talk, if we're going to evangelize, if we're going to share the gospel of Jesus, then we better uh, live out our faith genuinely and authentically. And so when we're talking about walking the walk, we are talking about doing the work, okay? Letting go of the stresses that we have and and the things that we do wrong and running with determination. That's what that word perseverance means. And so as we go into our next verse in Hebrews 12 2, we find that not only does walking the walk mean doing the work, but it also means shadowing Jesus. All right. Take a look at verse two of Hebrews 12. He says, the author says this, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith for the joy set before him. He endured the cross, scorning its shame and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. All right, now what do we get from this one text? And how does it talk about shadowing Jesus? Well, listen, it calls Jesus the pioneer and the perfecter of faith. That that word pioneer literally means trailblazer. It means someone who, who forges a new path. And so when we're talking about walking that walk and following uh, the example of those in Hebrews 11, we can't, we can't negate the fact that we are to follow the example of Jesus Christ himself because Jesus is the trailblazer, the pace setter for our faith. 
He's the one that we should be looking at and training for. You know, uh, I, I'm a runner, but there is no uh, more frustrating type of pace setter that I've ever seen in my life than that which exists on the old Mario Kart games. I don't know if they're on the new ones or not. I don't play the new ones, so I'm going off the, the, the OG from the 90s, right? That video game, you would get your best time, right? If you remember this, you would get your best time and then every other time you faced that course in a solo race, you went against your ghost. The, 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 the moment that you did your best. And let me tell you how frustrating it is because you, it was so hard to beat your best time, right? Unless you started copying the exact moves that your ghost was taking. If you did that, that was the key, right? Well, that's the same thing that happens with our faith. We have to mimic Jesus. Jesus is the ghost that is uh, telling us how how sharp to take those curves, what what uh, minds to, to uh, go around, where not to go, where the shortcuts might be uh, that we need to take in order to get to that finish line in the, in the best possible way. Because here's the deal. Not only is Jesus the pace setter, but he is the finish line. And so we have to be locked in to what he has done so that we can do the same. Listen, Jesus is, is, is also the one who designed and built the course. He, he, he's the guy who has an unfair advantage uh, by, because he's the one who designed the course. He knows where all the bumps and bruises are. He knows where all the twists and turns are because he designed and built the course. But here's the deal. He has offered us the blueprints. He has told us where these things are. He doesn't keep it to himself. And so by because of that, we know that that path can be trusted, not just because he designed it, but he walked it himself to prove, to prove that it was safe. And so his path, and therefore our path, it's filled with joy. It's filled with joy in the midst of sacrifice. It's filled with joy despite the negative comments uh, that we get. It's filled with joy understanding the end result. That's why we fix our eyes on Jesus, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame. Jesus saw this path as, as a joyful experience despite the tragedy, the anxiety, the depression, and the stress that he felt. And it could be the same too for us. If we are filled with joy, the way Jesus was filled with joy, then we can walk this path the best way that we know how in the midst of sacrifice, negative comments, and, no, and, and, and understanding that there are better days ahead. All right. So think about that as we head into our second section of our time together. Here are your three questions. Question number one, theological. Think through the life of Jesus and point to examples of when Jesus showed us the way to act as Christians. Number two, practical. Do negative comments about your faith impact you? If so, do they motivate you to do more or limit you in how you live as a Christian? Be specific as you can and as specific as you're comfortable with. Okay. Number three, skeptical. Christians are supposed to imitate or resemble Christ in their actions. Do you find this to be an accurate description of Christians? Talk about your experience with Christians and how they rate to living like Jesus. All right. Take uh, 10 minutes or so to either answer one, two, or three of those. Uh, and then come on back when you're done, and then we'll head into our final section of the night. Hey guys, welcome back. Hope you had a great discussion um, as we uh, finished talking about the idea that walking the walk uh, means shadowing Jesus, because Jesus is the author and perfecter of our faith. He has he has designed the course, he built the course, he walked the course, he finished the course, he is the finish line. And if he can do it, he has made it so that we can do it too, as long as we fix our eyes on him. So as we look into our last section of our time together, 
We understand that walking the walk means doing the work. We understand that walking the walk means shadowing Jesus. But we also have to uh, understand that walking the walk means no unnecessary complaining. It means no unnecessary complainers. Take a look at Hebrews 12, 3 and 4. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners that you will not grow weary and lose heart in your struggle against sin. You have not yet resisted to the point of shedding your blood. Wow, that's that's kind of a hard statement to take, right? Because if you look at Jesus, here's what the author is saying. If you look at Jesus and you look at the uh, life that he lived, especially towards the end, it was not a good life. I mean, he was beaten. He was uh, humiliated. He was uh, crucified, right? Uh, I mean, he went through so many different levels of pain. And, and not just physical pain, but if you look at how his experience was with just people in general, he, he lost a lot of relationships. His family at one time thought he was mentally ill. His disciples thought that he was uh, that that he was speaking things that made absolutely no sense. Everyone in their time with Jesus doubted him at some point. Most abandoned him when he needed them the most. He went through a ton of emotional and mental and physical spiritual and relational pain. And so the author tells us that if we consider that and we see how he was able to walk that path and finish the race, then we have nothing to complain about because if he can do it, we certainly can. The author says that in your struggle, against sin. You have not yet resisted to the point of shedding your blood. Look, you haven't died for your cause yet. If you had, then I want to hear from you because I don't know how you're watching this right now, right? You have not resisted to the point of shedding your blood. You have not died for your cause yet, but Jesus has. And it was a tough journey. Those people in Hebrews 11, those people died for their cause. And yet they finished faithfully. And if they can, if Jesus can, then so can we. Because walking the walk means no unnecessary complaining. It means getting the job done. So we, we, we can't just end up complaining about some of the small and petty things that we as Christians complain about. You know, we because we are a culture where... Christianity is uh, accepted by the majority of people still yet today. You know, we start complaining about things that honestly don't matter in the long run. You know, we start complaining about how uh, people attack us because they're trying to, uh, you know, get us to stop praying in a school or they're getting us to. Uh, you know, to not say Merry Christmas or they're getting us to, you know, to do whatever it is uh, that seems in their mind to be, you know, an okay thing to ask. But in our mind, uh, it seems like they're, they're asking us to pull off our left thumb, you know. And, and, and look, I'm not here to get into the politics of this because that doesn't matter. It's the mere fact that, look, I'm not saying don't fight for what you believe in because you need to fight what you, uh, for what you believe in. Every Christian martyr fought for what they believed in. What I'm telling you is that you got to pick your battles. You got to see if, if you know, uh, saying Merry Christmas or praying, uh, you know, praying in a, uh, in a school is, is uh, really worth the persecution. Now, you might say yes, and if so, then that's what God has called you to do in great. But for so many of us, for so many of us, it is, it is better to take the approach of Daniel, who instead of complaining to uh, you know, Nebuchadnezzar's face when he was told not to pray, he just did it anyway. 
without raising a, a, a ruckus, without complaining. He just got down on his knees and prayed. And so maybe that's what we have to do. But here's the point. You're not dead yet. Which means that your story hasn't been written yet. Which means that the instead of complaining about the things that you might be complaining about, start walking forward in your faith and allowing God to shine through you so that those people who are persecuting you, as Paul tells us, have no excuse to deny your uh, ethics or your personality or your character. All right. I want you to um, think about that as we head into our last section of questions. Uh, our theological question is this. What theological or scriptural evidence could you provide to defend the position that Jesus has suffered more than any other human at any other point in time? That's the theological question. The practical question is this. Does knowing Jesus suffered more than us give you motivation to live out your faith? Why or why not? And here's the skeptical one. Do Christians take the idea of suffering for Jesus too far in our country? Does the promotion of suffering in Christianity explain why Christians complain about things uh, when they don't get their way? All right, and you can fill in the blank about what that means. But you know, are are we as Christians today uh, complainers? Uh, defend your answer. You know, if so, why? If not, why? And talk about that. Uh, for the next 10 minutes, one or two or three of those questions. And then when you're done, come back and I will wrap us up. Hey guys, welcome back. We're finishing up our time together. And yeah, look, th this um, this idea that, you know, walking the walk means no unnecessary complaining. You know, it, it it's all about balancing out the things that we speak out against and speak up for, you know. Jesus is always up for debate. I mean, he's always up for us to to defend, and he's always up for us to to uh, to talk about when somebody um, speaks out against him. Right. As a matter of fact, my my rule on social media is that I won't really comment or post uh, a um, what we would consider a divisive uh, paper or comment or whatever. Um, unless somebody is actively attacking my faith, my God, uh, or um, my church, and if those one of those three conditions are met, I usually will, you know, say something um, as nice as I possibly can. Although, admittedly, I'm not perfect about it, right? But the point is, if I'm going to do that, and if you're going to do that, if you're going to call out. Uh, you know, the things that are wrong with our culture and you're going to uh, promote Jesus, then you, you have to do what the author of Hebrews is telling us to do. And that is, if you're going to talk the talk, you best be walking the walk, right? It's all about do our actions match our words, right? And, and it's not that, okay, I'm going to let my actions just rule. I'm not going to talk about anything, because that's not what the Bible says either. It says that you need to have a balance between your talking and your walking. And so as you go out and you outreach and we start talking about going to people, as we start talking about what evangelism really should look like, as we talk about these things, you have to make sure that, that you are uh, in a, a deep relationship with Christ, that you are confessing your sins to God, that you are in your spiritual habits, that you are, uh, are being faithful to the best of your ability and authentic to boot. All right, well, that will wrap it up for us today. If you are interested in learning more about our church or continuing this conversation, you can find us on uh, Facebook and Instagram. Uh, our Facebook is... Uh, at the bridge of Hendricks County, I believe it is, uh, and or the bridge Hendricks County, uh, and Instagram, it's at the bridge HC. Uh, the proper names are on the screen. If I get any of those wrong, uh, you can uh, from there you can comment on any of our posts. You can message us if you want to have further discussion or you want to meet, um, or you can uh, you can go to our YouTube page where this video is um, being streamed right now. And you can comment on there. Feel free to share any of these messages. Uh, hashtag us in it, the bridge HC, so we know what's going on. 
Uh, and if you want to meet in person, look, we have a service now every Tuesday night at 6.30 p.m. at the Books and Brew in Brownsburg. It goes from 6.30 to 8. If you don't like worship or singing and you, you want to skip that part, I get it, okay? Uh, our conversation starts at 7 p.m. It's just like this. I talk for 10 minutes, then around a table, you talk uh, about the questions that I've been asking, and then we do that for uh, about an hour. So if you want to come, feel free every Tuesday night at 6.30 p.m., okay? Uh, if you want to contact us, uh, you can go to our website, uh, thebridgehc.org, or uh, you can uh, email me, larrydvinson at gmail.com, uh, or you can, uh, you can come to Books and Brew on a Wednesday. I have office hours there uh, from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m., or uh, Sunday nights, I have, uh, I'm, I'm usually there uh, you know, fellowshipping with people, uh, from, uh, about 6 30 to eight o'clock. Okay. So any of those times you're more than welcome, uh, to come, you know, come check us out, come talk to us. We would love to hear from you guys. Listen, we are trying to raise support for us to be, uh, self-sufficient, uh, for, uh, the next two years. Um, so that, you know, we, we hope by then we have enough givers within the church that we don't have to ask for support, but we do need your support. If you like what you hear and you like what we're all about, uh, you can go to donate.thebridgehc.org. And from there, you can, you can give a one-time, weekly, monthly, uh, whatever frequency uh, amount that you want to give. Uh, we would love for you to partner with us. If you want to learn more about uh, who we are and you want to have that conversation, just come meet with me or go to our website. All the information is there. All right, that will do it for me, guys. I'm going to head out. But as always, peace, love, and soul. Oh.